Good morning, everyone watching live on BAM YouTube. Let me know in the comments which market you are tuning in live from. The hot sheet covers what you need to know about the real estate industry in a 24-hour time period. On today's hot sheet, I will discuss an ongoing stimulus in housing, mortgage payments, and why Fannie Mae thinks Q1 is a head fake. Today is Monday, February 27th, 2023. I am Byron Lazine, and the hot sheet starts now. Thank you for being with me here live. If you are, in fact, here live, hit the thumbs up. It's the best way to support this show. We're starting week seven of the hot sheet, going live every single Monday through Friday, live at 9.30 a.m. Who would have thought we would have gotten here? Let me know in the comments if you thought we'd make it this far. All right, I have a little bit of a story to lead off today. I'm going to just read along. It's a it's a story that if you're an agent, if you're an investor, uh, if you're somebody trying to make moves in housing in any way in 2023, it's going to be relevant to you. I'm going to be reading from a website called a wealth of common sense.com. A wealth of common sense. I think the world could use plenty of it. An ongoing stimulus in the economy for years to come. We bought our first home in late 2007. Our rate at the time for a 30-year fix was something like 6.25 or 6.5%. It didn't seem high at the time, but then again, we didn't have 3% rates in the rearview mirror to compare it to. When that 2004 to 2006, 2007, you know, you know, time frame was going on when houses were, uh, when values were going up before the great financial crisis. I remember I bought my first home, I think I was at 7.5%, maybe 7 and an eighth if my memory correct uh, is correct here i think i think it was just over 7% on the 30 year fix nobody was flinching an eye on 7% 6% and values continued to go up but he's right uh the person that wrote this article ben carlson uh i wonder who that is ben carlson is that the is that the ben carlson i'm thinking of i don't i don't think so i doubt it anyways uh ben writes that you know they didn't flinch because they didn't have 3% in the rear view mirror. Okay. So, uh, that's very true when you're accustomed to all your friends and, and people saying, Oh my gosh, I just got locked in at 3%. Here's my, you know, here's the house I bought You know, here's the square footage I have. And here's the payment I have. It's like, Oh, maybe I should wait till, till those times come back. Well, those were very historic times. They really never existed before. It's, it's not natural to have two and a half percent, 2.75 percent, three percent, uh, you know, interest rates. Don says my second home is 9.75%. Six looks pretty good right now in comparison to that. Absolutely. For sure. Houses, uh, house prices were obviously a lot lower back then. You know, 2007, they weren't that low, right? So, some markets, Ben, uh, didn't come back to 2007 prices till the last couple of years. So, okay. Uh, and going even lower for a few more, because you know, in 2007, he's saying that they were, they were coming down. So he was on the way down. I got you. Uh, we lived in that house for 10 years until we outgrew it. Okay. So then they, they were a move up buyer. Uh, we were able to refinance a couple of times following the great financial crisis. Still remember the monthly payment on that first mortgage payment we made. It was seared into my financial memory. When we purchased our new place in 2017, I think rates were around 4.5%. So it was a no-brainer to refinance at 3% during the pandemic when mortgage rates fell to the floor. Of course, a lot of people did that, okay? Rates got so so low during the pandemic that the monthly mortgage payment is now that we pay is $150 more per month than we were paying on that first payment back in 2007. That's despite the fact that the price of our new home was 150% higher than our first house. Think about how many people took advantage during that time, 2020, 2021, whether it was a refinance like this, you know, this person who bought a house in 2007 and just refied into a, a better situation uh, during the pandemic, or if it was somebody who went out and bought a home early in the pandemic who beat the surge. Okay. Those are going to be winners for a long time in this housing market. And that's where this story is heading. We didn't put a lot down on our first home and rolled the equity from that one into the new home. We put down, uh, we paid down the mortgage as well. The taxes, insurance, upkeep are obviously more expensive on the current home, but this shows you 
how low mortgage rates got into 2020 and 2021. The fact that they're only paying $150 more per month than their first payment back in 2007, and their house is 150% more expensive. It means it's bigger, it's a better house for them and their situation, all of that. We're able to lock into an extremely low fixed debt cost on our biggest monthly budget item, and we weren't alone. An estimated one quarter of those who currently carry a mortgage have rates of 3% or lower. Two thirds of mortgages with debt are at 4% or lower. That's an incredible number right there. It's something I called in quarter one of last year, this cold war of real estate where, where people, this cold war in housing, where, where you're going to have homeowners saying, I can't move up in, in a six and a half percent environment because rates got so low and they don't want to give up that payment. They don't want to give up that mortgage. They may not even, if they do buy up, if they're in a financial situation where they can buy up, they may not want to give up that house and they'll keep it as an investment. Why would you want to give up 3% on an asset like that? You don't want to give that up. That's ridiculous. You're not going to see that come back. You're not going to see it come back anytime soon. You may never see it come back 2.5% on a 30-year fixed. Two-thirds of people that own single-family homes are locked into 4% or lower. Okay, so it's going to be very difficult to get the inventory we need moving in the right direction to really bring affordability down in housing. Total U.S. Uh, debt totaled nearly $17 trillion as of year in 2022. Almost $12 trillion of that is made up of mortgage debt. Okay, I don't think this is a bad thing. I don't think this is a bad thing. Here's the chart. Everything's available in our daily download link below where you can get all our sources and charts in one place. Once you sign up, you get it every single day. Okay. Uh, so it shows you here 17 million US total US uh, household debt is purple. US mortgage debt is the orange line. If you're, if you're just listening to the hot sheet and you can't see it, I'll walk you through it here. 17 trillion right now in total US household debt. US mortgage debt makes up 12 million of that. Okay. You can see this line going all the way back before 2002. These two lines follow each other. Okay. It, it's, it's not that this is an, an abnormal spread right now. The spread is, is typically um, where, it, where it sits right now. 70% of all household debt is made up of mortgage debt. Okay. This doesn't mean that an individual should have 70% of their income going to their mortgage. No, that's not what this means at all. The total household debt, total household debt is 70% going to mortgage. To me, that's a good thing. Okay. Car debt, bad debt, student loan debt, bad debt, right? Uh, all this other debt, credit card debt, awful debt. Okay. So I, I can't think of you know, that what that 30% is made up of outside of those three things, that's typically probably where that debt's going to be made up. I can't think of anything better than a mortgage debt. If you're going to have debt, it should be mortgage. I, I think this number should be higher than this. I think 70% of household debt being mortgage is too low. Okay. I'd like to see households have less debt unless it's real estate, because we know the path to wealth is much greater if you own real estate. Okay. So, th so this doesn't scare me. This doesn't 70% of household debt being mortgage debt is a good thing to me. I'd like it to be 80%. Uh, I'd like less debt to be tied up in student loans, which bogs people down for years to come. The home ownership uh, rate in, in, in uh, the country is currently 66%. That number's too low. That number's too low. Okay. Getting that up over 70% would be a beautiful thing. It's becoming harder. Okay, they, we haven't made it easier the last couple of years. Consumption makes up roughly 70% of the U.S. Inflation has been the biggest sort story of the economy, of course. Uh, we'll be talking about that here a bunch. It gets into like, you know, basically retail sales and some of this stuff. I'll link that up so you can can uh, go through it. Here's the punchline, okay? We're, we're uh, you know, stimulus right now, but we saw that in a big way and that, that drove up inflation and, and certainly, you know, Put us into the position that we're in now where we're probably going to be heading into a recession this year one of the biggest drivers of this ongoing stimulus and, and i do think he has something here is the fact that two-thirds of the mortgages are locked in at less than four percent in this country 
And that's freed up a lot of spending for people moving forward. Okay. If they're not going to sell their house, if they're just going to lock in and they know what their mortgage payment is for the next 10 years and it's under 4% interest rate, they've got more money to spend on other things. And that is going to be an ongoing case of stimulus where more people have more money to spend on other things going forward for years to come. So there's going to be a long-term impact of these two and a half to 4% interest rates that two thirds of Americans are, are locked into. If you could put that uh, Bobby back up, uh, Landon says we're in the process of selling a home that has an assumable loan with a rate under 4%, very enticing to buyers. Yeah, if you can market this assumable loan, I know it's a little bit of a tricky process, Landon. I don't know if you want to elaborate on the process and what you're doing to help them you know, position this. And, it, and if you believe you're going to get that homeowner more money by positioning this assumable loan, I think it's a little bit of a longer process. I believe it's something similar to the process of a short sale. Let me know if I'm wrong. Um, I haven't done one of those. I, I've researched them. I've talked to some brokers and team leaders. Uh, who are who are marketing some uh, some opportunities like what you're talking about? Certainly going to be a win for a buyer if they can if they can grab a four percent loan and assume that in this environment for sure. Jeff, uh, people still spending right now, which is not help helping inflation and thus interest rates um, and the housing market. Absolutely, Jeff. You know what we ha saw in January was a really hot economy. Okay, people were spending out of out of control. It was, it was the biggest month even taking all those you know, stimulus months into consideration in the last couple of years. So, so January was a big spending month. We had a, uh, you know, a winter month where a lot of typically cold environments were not. They were warm. We had a much warmer January, so people probably were more out and about. I know when, when you get a big snowstorm, I'm about to go to Connecticut here this week, so I'll be doing the hot sheet the rest of the week from Connecticut. There's a big snowstorm coming tonight and tomorrow. I'm not looking forward to that. And, and what will typically happen when you get a, you know, a two, three day dumping of some bad weather is, is people stay inside, right? Which means they're not spending as much money. They're making hot cocoa and, and watching movies and, no, and those type of things. I won't be making any hot cocoa. I'll be doing the hot sheet tomorrow, no matter what happens with that weather. Hit the thumbs up if you appreciate that. Okay. So uh, anyways, uh, to, to summarize this, and th there's um, there is the charts below. There's one more chart from this. Actually, I do want to show you. Summarize this though. Uh, there is going to be an impact here uh, of this this long term wealth that was created the last couple of years by people being able to lock into really low interest rates. And what do I mean by the wealth that was created? U.S. owners' equity in in household real estate net worth balance sheet of households uh, and not pro and nonprofits as well. Uh, you can see the line here. It's at uh, almost thirty trillion dollars. It's just straight up. We're starting to see that top off, right? Uh, but but really going all the way back to the 60s, this has done nothing but increase outside of the great financial crisis where you had a significant you know gap there before it started going back up again in 2000, you know, call it 10, 11, 12, somewhere in there, probably 12 is where we see that bounce back up. And it's just been a straight line since then. It's not even a COVID thing. It's 2012 till now. So naturally, uh, we'll, we'll see this kind of top off. Uh, but people do have more money to spend because of what happened. And and now, you know, we're likely, if you've been following last week's hot sheet, we're likely going to pay the price and we're going to pay the price this year, right? So if you're an agent, recognize that uh, what, we're, what we're in in 2023 is a very hard market and one that takes a little bit more grit and determination for agents to help serve their communities. Uh, what's going on with mortgage payments right now? Okay, so we, we just talked about that those two thirds of folks who are locked into 4% or under, but people buying a home right now, that's not going to be the case for them. So what, what's happening with their mortgage payments? Mortgage Banker Association, mortgage application payments increased 2.3% to $1,964 in January. Okay. Uh, home buyer affordability declined again in January with the national median payment applied for by purchase applicants increasing 2.3% from $1,964 $1, from $1,920 in December 2020. This is according to MBA Purchase Applications Payment Index. Measures how new monthly mortgage payments vary across time relative to income. All right. Uh, although interest rates fell 16 basis points from December 22 to January, which we've, we've seen all of that come back plus some uh, in February, homebuyer affordability declined slightly due to the increase in median purchase application amount 
which inched up to twelve thousand dollars to three hundred and twelve thousand. Okay, so people are are borrowing more, whether that's because you know they're they're getting a bigger house, whatever you know. So so those numbers are really reflective, probably more so in in the rise in how much these home values have gone up. Okay, some other key uh, uh, findings from MBA's purchase application index, the national median mortgage payment. This this will be down below for you in the sources and, and slides. Uh, 1964 up from 1920. Okay. Uh, it's also though down night from 1977 in, in December. Okay. So we saw it go down from November, December, now back up in January. I think this number will probably cross 2000 in February with where we are at on the interest rate. Okay. Uh, it's up $437 from one year ago. It's almost a 30% increase. Home affordability for shoppers right now in quarter one it, it is a really in, in a really hard spot. National median mortgage payment for FHA loan applicants uh, was 1,619 in January, up from 1,600 in December, um, and up from 1,100 in January 2022. All right, so somebody doing an FHA was was getting in for 1,100. Now they're over 1,600. Top five states with the highest purchase applicant payment index were Nevada, Idaho, Utah, Arizona, and Florida. Top five states with the lowest PAPI were DC, not a state, but they, they always say this is a state. Washington DC is not a state if anybody's confused. And I'm sorry, I don't know why that keeps uh, checking in and out. Let me see here. Oh, interesting. we got something going on here. I can read them off if it's not going to come back. We'll see what happens. Let's see. There it is. All right, we're back. Uh, top five states with the lowest PAPI were D.C., not a state, Dak North Dakota, Connecticut, Arizona, uh, Ar I'm sorry, Arkansas, and West Virginia. Home, border, home buyer affordability decreased for black households, decreased for Hispanic households, and decreased for white households. Okay, there you go. There's some uh, information there for you on what's going on with home purchase applications. I can see here today... Uh, I made a statement on Knowledge Brokers Podcast. If you didn't see this week's Knowledge Broker Podcast, go to at Knowledge Brokers Podcast. It's a separate YouTube channel. I mean, Tom and I, Tom Tool and I just give so many talking points to walk people through what's happening right now. And one of the clips went up on Instagram. You can find me at Byron Lazine on Instagram this morning where I say, if you're telling people it's always a good time to buy then you're going to look like an idiot in two to three months. And I already see a comment on here saying, if you're that agent telling all your buyers it's a bad time to buy, I trust you, you're going to understand the consequences of where you and your team wind up next year. I'm, hey, Christian, I'm sure you're a good guy. I'm going to respond to your comment. Uh, but never did I say, tell buyers it's a bad time to buy. I say, if you, what you're doing is throughout your entire career saying it's a good time to buy, it's a good time to buy. You know, I just sound like a sleazy salesperson you are going to look like an idiot in two to three months when affordability drops down and it might take four months, five months. But if somebody comes to me right now as a buyer and says, my number one priority is affordability, it is fitting into a payment. Great. Well, here are the variables that are happening right now. I would show them this slide. I would show them the fact that inventory is likely to increase due to seasonality impact in March and in you know March to June, right? We're, we're going to see inventory come up. We're seeing across the country in the 400 major metros pricing come down. We have this interest rate increase, but Fannie Mae, we talked about it last week, uh, and others are saying the interest rate is going to come down over time. So it's going to become more affordable for you later in the year than it is right now. Certainly in the second half of the year. Okay, that's just going to that's just going to end up being a true statement, more than likely right? Just based off everything we've been talking about in the hot sheet. And so I'm not saying it's a bad time to buy if you find the right house, if you're going to be there seven to 10 years. And we go through that on the pod, right? And and sometimes, listen, some of these clips can come out of context, but those agents taking it from the agent commission breath approach. Good buys are good buys in any market. Agree with that. There's going to be good buys in there, but you're talking about the consequences of what you and your team will wind up next year. First of all, my team sold 687 homes last year. It was number one in the state. We'll probably sell, you know, well over that this year. We're going to get ours. We're going to get ours because we're doing the activities to help a whole bunch of people. Doesn't mean we're we're going to tell people it's always a good time to buy. If you always say the same thing, it's always a good time to buy. Eventually, you're going to look like an idiot because it's not always a good time to buy. 
if that buyer says it's all about my monthly payment. If they say it's all about my lifestyle, then for sure, let's go find the right house for the lifestyle for the next seven to 10 years. Okay. Uh, there's context. This is why this is a relationship business. This is why in, in real estate, if, as an agent, going deep on what a personal need, you know, person's needs are is really important. Here from Boise, you know, this is a, a market, Boise, which has been really beat up. Prices continue to, to decline. Multiple offers on homes priced under 450000 yet seeing a buyer pause uh, due to rates, seeing cash buyers. Most confusing market seen in 21 years. Yeah, Bo Boise. And a lot of these markets are very confusing. I saw a stat this morning. You know, uh, South Florida hasn't, hasn't dropped as much as other markets because it's over 60% in most towns. Uh, the town I'm sitting in right now, Naples, Florida, it's almost 70% cash buyers. Okay. You know, if you're coming in with a mortgage in this market, you're not even really going to compete. Okay. If you're in a multiple offer situation. Okay. Lance Lambert. Uh, to close out the week last week, he touched more on the Fannie Mae housing report that we talked about here on the hot sheet. Uh, he's calling this the housing market just pulled a head fake. OK. Uh, talk about a national housing market recovery is overblown. OK. And this is what it looked like in January that we, we kind of hit bottom. But uh, I said it last week as well. This looks like a head fake. OK. And Lance and I are on the same page on how we look at, at what Fannie Mae is saying. At least that's according to a Fannie Mae report published this week that predicts the housing market uh, relatively high note in January and February is likely to prove temporary. Absolutely. I see more pain in housing coming uh, later in the year. And that becomes evident with what we've seen in the last three weeks. Early 2023, a combination of factors came in. Obviously, you know, the interest rates uh, going down. You know, we hit the 599 in early February. And, uh, mortgage or home builders are offering these substantial mortgage buy downs. Okay. However, we're starting to see the housing market backdrop sour again, uh, past three weeks. We're now up to 6.88 to close out last week on the 30 year. The resurgence in mortgage rates has already caught corresponded with a seasonal adjusted mortgage rate application. Okay. Let's take a look at, at where we are, are at on this, uh, mortgage application, mortgage purchase application index. We are at the lowest purchase application reading since 1995. Okay, so people using a mortgage, we have the lowest, another way to say this, if you're using a mortgage, we have the lowest buyer demand since 1995. There are pockets, and this is and the, the comment from uh, the person from Boise, Idaho, there are pockets where it seems like there's high demand in certain price points on certain properties. Anything median below is going to certainly you know, look like that. Those are pockets. Those are moments in time in this market. The overall story is demand is considerably lower. There are high interest rates when we look in the rear view mirror of the last few years, not historically, but certainly speaking in the last few years, there is significant pressure on pricing. There's significant pressure on the economy. We've had hot inflation reports the last three weeks. We'll see what the Fed does in March. There's a belief that we could go 50 basis points up. There's a belief that we're going to go into a recession sooner than later. And it's going to get harder before it gets easier. Okay. All right. So uh, there you go on the mortgage purchase application. And that, that's where this head fake is coming in. If you look at this part of the line, we saw this pop up. Okay. We, we might be on our way up. No, not the case. We've come down now to our lowest point since 1995. And here's a closer look at Fannie Mae's forecasted drop in US home prices. Okay, that purple line is where Fannie Mae expects prices by the end of the year, of end of 2023. Okay. Uh, Fannie Mae expects prices by the end of 2024 to be even lower. We went over these numbers uh, in last week's hot sheet, but still substantially higher than we were in 2019. Okay, if I draw on this and I and I go 2019, that, that was about here. And this is where we're going to end up the end of 2024. We're still substantially higher on prices than we were in 2019. So this off the top of home values isn't the end of the world by any means. But according to Fannie Mae, 
with, with all the factors that we've been discussing, we have we still have a ways to go. Uh, call it about six percent between now and the end of 2024, according to Fannie Mae. That's an updated housing forecast. They update it every single month. They may update it again. Let's take an updated look on where we are at right now on the 10 year. Okay, 10 year is down a tick here today. That's good news. The market, uh, pre market futures Dow was up. I don't know where it is right now. I can take a quick look. Uh, where's the Dow? The Dow's up today about 256 points as of right now. SP's up, NASDAQ is up. So 10 years down. Markets are coming into this week, uh, responding well. That's a good thing. We're down. 0.046 on the 10 year. Hopefully that will mean we get a little bit uh, off the top on this 30 year fix, which ended the week at 6.88, February 24th. Last week, we, we spent the week between 6.8 and that 6.88 number staring down 7%. But it looks like today we could get a little bit of a relief as that 10 year is down. There is a monster podcast today premiering at 11 a.m. On the channel here make sure you are subscribed hit subscribe to this channel right now and, and make the notification bell on over ask so you don't miss it eric and matt are going to be having on jordan cohen he's the number one remax agent worldwide does over 300 million in volume a year he's got clients like uh sylvester stallone aaron darnold of of the uh the los angeles rams a lot of big time clients uh one of his clients the miz and his wife will be on the pod with Jordan today. So this is a very special pod, and he has an enormous announcement that he hasn't made anywhere. He's making right here on BAM. He chose BAM to be the spot uh, to make this significant announcement that will impact any real estate agent in the country. Okay, so make sure you tune into that premiering live at 11 I am Byron Lazine. I have enjoyed today's start of the week. I hope you're enjoying it as well. And I'll be with you all tomorrow from Connecticut on the hot sheet live at 9.30 a.m. Till then, toodaloo.